All right, who wants ideas on porch decorating for spring? Hello, my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today I will be discussing eight different things you can do to make your porch look perfect for springtime. All right, now, as you know, if you've been around, I love to thrift. So most of what I'm gonna show you is thrifted. Some of it isn't, but we'll talk about that. First thing I found was a linen book in this robin egg blue. So one thing I love about seasonal decorating is that you get to experiment with colors that you would never use to have in your room for like five or 10 years but you like the color, you just can't do it all. So, enter spring decorating. I'm gonna use this robin egg blue as an inspiration this year. I think I paid 50 cents for this book, and we'll see what we can do with ideas for this. Number two, I found this rocker at a thrift store, in my favorite thrift store in Snohomish, Washington, and I was with my good friend, and I said, I saw it and I was like, ooh. I mean, I had to look past the yellow flowers on it and the broken wicker. But I looked at it and I was like, you know what, I'll pay 60. And I knew, you, that's a tip. You need to know when you're about to barter, you need to know what your line is. <clears throat> because you don't wanna like get caught up in the emotion of the, like, the little bidding war that goes on that you do with yourself. Okay, so he comes back and he looks at it and he says, uh, 50, 50 bucks. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> so I took that thing home and I thought for 50 bucks, I can figure this out. So it's super comfortable and I actually have it up in my room next to the fire and I often will find myself sitting in it like chatting with my husband about something and just cozy by the fire and reading. So I've got some ideas on how to make that cute. Number three, I want you to grab these hangers. Now you don't need a million of them, but you know, two or three would be good. These wooden pants hangers. We're gonna use them for artwork. So I paid probably a dollar each for these at a garage sale. So this, I found at an antique mall. It's a cloche. Whenever you see a cloche that's a good price, I think this was $7, this is a good price. You need to get them. You need to have a collection of cloches. In case you wanted one more thing in your life to be collecting, here it is, a cloche. And I have a few of these and we're gonna cluster them all together for a spring little vignette out on the porch. Number five, a bifold door. I paid $30 for this at a salvage yard and I, I like the color, but we're gonna give it a little coat of paint to freshen it up for springtime. So when, whenever you see a bifold door, think large shutter. It's not a bifold door, it's now a shutter and it looks great for decorating. Number six, you see these at garage sales? Go ahead and grab them. You can get them for a dollar. And these also can look cute with artwork, so we'll be working on that. Number seven. This was not thrifted. It was $10 from Ikea and it's been discontinued. So I'm sorry to say you can't get this exact one unless you can track it down on eBay or Poshmark or something. But any type of a wooden crate like this is really pretty for holding plants in the springtime. So we'll be working on that. And lastly, number eight, I found these floral plaster reliefs, I guess is what you would call them. And they were at a thrift store for one dollar each. We're gonna change these up and make them look a little bit more European. All right, let's get started. So number one is our blue book. I am going to take this color as an inspiration for this year's porch decorations. And I also am going to track down some green books that I usually decorate with in the spring and put these together. Okay, now I need to figure out this chair. So I've been thinking about it for a while and we have this damage over here that I could, I mean, I have just been keeping a cute throw blanket over this 
but I just was looking at it and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, well, seven pieces that are out of order here. But it's not too difficult to feed them back up into place. And so I think that I can just do that. If I cannot, for some reason, I will cut off as close to the bottom as I can, cut them off, and then just do my blanket over the arm. And I'll have to glue this down in place. Okay, so I'm not too worried about that. Next, I need to make a decision on color. I thought about painting it gray, but the more I've lived with it, the more I don't mind it. I think the chocolate brown is just fine. So we'll give it a good scrubbing up and it should be all right. So now I definitely need to deal with this fabric. This is not my style at all. Um, it's incredibly comfortable. I'm not gonna replace the cushion because of that. So not worried about that, but I will, let's oh, see, it's really well constructed. I will create a new cover for it with piping. And I have, I don't know if this will work, but I recently did my pinch pleat curtains downstairs. So I now have some leftover drop cloth, bleached drop cloth. Now I need to know what to do with this. I, I feel like it's out of place. If I did a cute fabric on the back, and I'll have to check my stash, this could be pretty. I just, this one, this front side just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm actually gonna open it up with you guys. And let's look at what's underneath. So I have my staple remover, which is great for upholstery tacks. And I wear batting gloves. Check my hands. Look under here. Okay, we have some batting. Okay, and then we have it's really well, it's been professionally done. So then we have burlap. And if you ever wanna reupholster, it's really as simple as usually just taking it apart methodically and understanding the different layers and then putting it back together with newer fabric and batting and foam. It's very tedious, but it totally is doable. The back batting is showing and then the fabric is right there. It's like I either need to do fabric on the front and the back or I need to take it all off, which would look like this. I carefully rewove the pieces of wicker that had been pulled out and that worked really well was able to salvage that side arm underneath. Then I took it outside and I took a toothbrush and some soapy dish water and scrubbed it all down before I moved on to the upholstery section. I have a actually a slip cover and upholstery series which we will link for you. There's a whole playlist that you can study but I made custom piping. I used my favorite linen which is the linen that I use on my Parson Chairs video. It's called Papyrus Linen. That's the color, and I get it at Joann's. It's my favorite one. And I went ahead and made it extra thick by adding in a second layer of bleached drop cloth because I like it for a slip cover. I don't always like it for upholstery if I'm going over the top of other fabric. So the seed of this I recovered, and it's actually going over the top of that yellow floral fabric. So I wanted it extra thick. So I made that and then decided to take the batting from the, ch the back of the chair and make a little cushion that we tie and hang over the back. I think I like that style the best. So that's what we did. We gave this little chair an update and I really like how it turned out. It was just what I was going for. I bought the artwork off Etsy and I, they are so beautiful. I'm sure that you guys will want some of these too so i'll put the links in the description below but it's just as simple as paying five dollars or so for a painting or a print and then printing it in color on some cardstock on your printer i used my etsy artwork to put on my clipboards and my wooden pant hangers for some wall art
Number six, we're going to give our cheap little clipboards a little facelift and then we're gonna put some artwork on them and hang them on the wall. So first of all, I'm going to get those clamps to stay up and out of my way while I'm painting. I made this in my last video, this little knockoff version of an English crockery piece with a stamp. And now it holds some of my twine. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of twine and just tie this up and out of my way. I just threaded it through a few times and tied a bow. I'm totally into this fusion mineral paint right now and the color lichen. I, we painted our sewing cabinet recently in this color, so I'm just gonna keep going. I normally would suggest not dipping your brush directly into your paint so you don't contaminate that, but this is such a tiny project. I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so put something down to lift your project up into the air. Number seven. So any style of wooden crate like this, they call them toolboxes actually. So these are really beautiful. They make really good centerpieces for long tables because they don't take up too much space. But that's a side note. I'm gonna fill these with ferns. So I have one that I got at Ikea. Ikea is a great source for florals. And then Joann's, I always, I'm keeping my eye on the, they call them floral picks. They just look like this. So this was $5 and then if you get them at the end of the season, then they're half off or 80% off or something fantastic and I just load up on them. So if you buy these, you can just keep, you know, piling them together to open them up a little bit. But you just get a collection of them going and you can make any size plant that way. So I do, actually I prefer to use floral picks when I'm putting together a, a plant. And then I'm just gonna put them in going different directions. Very simple spring decoration to pull off. Ferns are just such an elegant, lacy plant to incorporate in your spring decorations. I love how feminine they are and detailed and they really help you pull off that English cottage vibe. Number eight are these plaster reliefs that I found at Deseret Industries for a dollar each. So we're just gonna take off our price tag. And I am going to just give this a coat of Ardex feather finish and make them look like they're concrete. So this is the feather finish and I like the gray color. This is made in Europe and it is a powder that you mix up and it acts like a paint and it dries and then it looks like concrete. So you can, it's this faux concrete look. People do their kitchen counters. I did a beautiful desk for my husband in a previous video and I love this product. So we're gonna mix up a two to one part consistency. So let's start with four tablespoons of the powder and then we'll do two tablespoons of water. So you wanna go for cake batter consistency. And because I'm using such a small amount, I'm just using my milk paint whisk. It feels a lot like working with milk paint. Probably we'll wanna do two coats, and I'm just gonna use a chip brush so I can throw it away. Chip brushes are very inexpensive, basically disposable paint brushes. Right before I am done with this first coat, I'm just going back over it lightly and trying to make these flat surfaces have even texture. So when I did my actual tabletop on my husband's desk, I actually had a trowel that I smoothed it perfectly before I 
let it dry. So we're just gonna gently do the brush strokes all very carefully in the same direction. I'm doing the, do the edges first, then you set it on something. I just have a little glass jar from Costco desserts. Just to give it a little lift. So after the feather finish dries, you're gonna sand down the flat areas to make it as smooth as possible, and then do a second coat of your Ardex feather finish. When that dries, then you use this product here, and you are going to do a clear coat it goes on like milk and looks blue, but it dries really well. All right, I hope you enjoyed all those spring decorations. Let me know in the comments below which ones you are going to try. And I do have a little free gift for you. I have these printable seed packets that you can get copies of by clicking on the link below. And you can print those out and incorporate those in your little porch decorations as well. So thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button so I can send you more videos on how to make interior design easy. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.